Okrima Media in Johannesburg, I'm Sane Laminim. Joining me today is Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education, Bongi Wembing Mokigaba, to discuss matters in her portfolio. So, Chairperson, the recent uh, Pearl survey, I'm sure you, you are familiar with uh, the discoveries from it that shocked uh, a lot of us. Uh, it discovered or displayed shocking statistics that uh, 81% of our grade 4 learners uh, can read for meaning. And this study also finds that the, the situation is getting worse over time. How do you interpret these findings? I must say, as the portfolio committee, we are we are concerned uh, that um, eighty one percent of our particularly grade four learners are not able to read for meaning. Um, though we know number of issues the department has um, briefed us on. But it is a concern. But also, um, I just want to mention that um, you remember the Pearl's results is South Africa as an African country. Um, trying to compete with the uh, rich and uh, all other countries in the world. Actually, South Africa with, uh, I think it's two countries from the continent that participated on pills. Yeah. Though that doesn't make us to, to make excuses. I think that's what we even said um, uh, with, with, the, with, the, with the department that we are content. And we think that something needs to be done, um, which of course they said they will work on um on these results mm. so from from what you've heard from the department what what are the early interventions that you believe um will help uh, to rescue this situation acknowledging um the challenges that they have uh, mentioned to us um of course one of the of the interventions is to you know, what is good with this is that the department is busy um, moving. I think you would know they are moving ECT from Department of Social Development to Department of um, Basic Education. So it helps because we should mean they will start a child. A child would not necessarily have to go to a different ECT because I think that's where it starts with any child. For me and you to make sure that our children get um, a better education and, and they are able to read for meaning, it depends on the type of ECD we took them to. So the fact that ECD is moving to Department of Basic Education, I think that is one of the biggest intervention that this government is doing. And I think it starts there because look, a child, remember there are, there are, there are, there are stages of each and every child. So it's better to start a child with a foundation and a culture that says, let's read. So as young as the child is from, from other started three, other started two. So at two, at, at, the, at the age of two or three, but a culture of a book in front of a child should be done by the, by the Department of Basic Education in our view. So that you are able to follow the growth of that child in reading. So speaking of the issues of resources, we know that there is also another issue of under-resourced schools. What, what is the department telling you when it comes to this issue? That is mentioned as 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 one of the of the challenges. There are there are no resources in our public schools. That is that is one of reality. And actually, the book also is a resource. Uh, is 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 a scarce thing. So one of the things that we have mentioned is that they need, um, they need to get as much books as possible into public schools. Uh, there are there are schools where you've got reading corners during break, 
Um, in the classroom, there are, there is a reading corners where you've got all types of books. So if your child feels it doesn't want to go and play uh, during break, you just give a child that um, it just grabs a book and reads. And um, they, they, they should find, uh, they must be able to get books. They must be able to find a way of inculcating a culture of reading. And that includes um, making parents, making us as parents also understand that some of the things that we need to do is to buy our children books. When we buy toys, that toy, some of the money must have uh, must be able to buy a book so that you um, you are able to um, to teach your child that at a, at a certain time, maybe before bed or whatever time you agree as a family, that is a reading period. So a lot of, of these issues have also led to the DA and other political parties calling for Minister Angie Motecha to step down as they say she has failed to turn uh, most of the issues in her portfolio for many years. What is your view on the matter and do you think she has what it takes um, to solve these issues that we are discussing today? I am a politician, right? But I don't think that a matter of our children in South Africa should be not being able to to read should be should be should be politicized. I think that it's a it's a bit extreme. You can't politicize it, and also you can't um, individualize um, it. By the way, minister is the is the is the political head of the department. So a culture of reading, like I was just saying to you, Sane, that it should start with you as a parent identifying an ECD for your child. There's no angel there. Taking your child to a school, it should be you as a parent deciding that my child should go to that particular school, to that particular mem, because it's mems grade one or two there's no angel there it's it's a it's a it's a family decision now the department of basic education in my view i stand to be corrected with all its challenges because there's no department that does not have challenges i think it is stabilized department there is a stability in the Department of Basic Education and a stability in any department. It's not something that you gain um, in five years. It's being able to keep a political leadership for a certain period. The same, I mean, I think now the minister has been there for 14 years. That's quite, she has built a stability. And I wouldn't want us as politicians to look into the matter and say that um, when we are faced with challenges, then uh, let's rush for the political head. So let's deal with the issue. The issue here is our country testing itself as an African country with international countries. You know, with, with with all other countries, we are testing the ability of our children to write. We are not doing that within ourselves. We have taken ourselves out of the comfort zone, which is our country, which is the African continent. We've taken ourselves to the world. And do you want to come and blame that issue to an individual? There should be something wrong with us. We can't. It can't be an individual's problem and I hope I'm not coming as defending her because I'm leading um actually a portfolio committee which makes it to account uh, to us and the public. But I really think it will be unfair, you know, to look into this matter, look into the results. And yes, they are regressing. Remember, our country started in participating in polls uh, in 2006. So every five years uh, we participate. Every five years we participate. But you can't reduce that to an individual, to, to a minister. 
actually we should apply her we should apply her to, to against all odds to still think that let us not get demotivated but let us proceed in contesting with the world so chairperson another issue that is affecting a lot of schools in our country is the issue of pit latrines we know that the basic education department has uh, recently changed uh, the deadline to 2025 what do you think uh, should be done to make sure that these uh, pit latrines are done away with? I don't want to speak as if I'm, 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 I'm within the department. I'm not, right? But we fortunately had this briefing um, just yesterday of the a city and saves the infrastructure um, a briefing with the with the department. There is a backlog. A serious backlog, particularly in our rural um, schools. Um, and um, how I look at it and how I always say to the department, even to put 2025 to me, I think it's not, it's not, because 2025 will come eventually. And if you deal with, with, with pit latrines, and you still have got problems of water in the country, in rural areas, and you are not sure whether you will be able uh, to have boreholes in the entire rural areas of this country. I still think to, to put 2025, um, it's a bit, um, I don't know, but it's a bit, to me, it's a bit um, ambitious. But of course, they are the ones, tech, uh, uh, people who deal with, with technical things in the department do have these answers. And I can't say uh, they are, um, uh, like I think they are ambitious. They know why why they say um, we, we would get rid of them. Getting rid of pit light trends, it's, it's, it's our view also as a portfolio committee that we need to get rid of pit light trends now in our schools because of course, of the dangers um, that are there, especially for for the children that are very, are very small. And um, I mean, they are also outdated. To be honest, you know, I always say when I speak to the department that look, out of nine provinces, first state managed to get rid of pit latrines like as in totally, and first state does have rural areas too. So it it can happen in the entire country. It just needs everyone to put hands on deck and put and make sure that we 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 are able um to get um our 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 infrastructure in a, in a, in the right in the right manner. So Chairperson, on top of the of all the issues that are facing uh, the basic education department, we know that most of the schools now were affected by the floods uh, in KZN especially. What has been done to make sure that these schools um, are rebuilt uh, as, as soon as possible? In case that in the last time we interacted with them, um, I know they had put in, put in interim um, solutions like your mobile classrooms. But I know your question is saying, when are they going to rebuild? I can't tell that. I don't know. You know, a flood is something that comes unexpected. And um, you, you need to have money for that. It's a new financial year now. Of course, we have not been, uh, we have not interacted with the department to find out whether they have put it sunnies aside to build um, structures um, from the scratch. But at least what we appreciated, particularly in KZN, because it was it was really affected by floods, and many schools were affected by floods, but they. They had um, put it in uh, mobile classrooms in most, actually all the schools that were affected by floods. So as much as a, a mobile classroom is not ideal, is not what we would want to see our children in, but the fact that there is an intervention that makes reading and, and, and learning to continue, we, we are fine. So to, to answer your question, I'm not, I'm not sure when will, will they say, no, we are done now. Because also with KZN, to be honest, if you if you look now, 
uh, floods are, are consistent. They come. They come. Uh, when you think that you, you are done uh, with one problem, then they come. So it's a problem that probably the entire government of that province would have to look into and find uh, money to deal with floods, as in floods together. So a lot of schools are also dealing with crime uh, as more reports of teachers and learners are robbed uh, in schools uh, are witnessed. What can be done to make sure that the schools are protected? That's that's a difficult one, sadly. Um, and it's, um, it is worrying for our country that uh, we are not able to get our schools safer the way we want them to be safe. But the problem with schools, if we must be honest, they are they are within communities. Actually, if I think even now, when when I was at school, when I went for lunch break, I had to go, I had to go home, eat, and go back to school. So I don't know if it's still the case now. So that's 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 the proximity of the schools to um to our communities. And our communities are full of a lot of things, and crime is 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 one of those things. They are full of people wandering, people who are called amapara, people who are gangsters, and our learners um, get to be raised in such society, and at the very same time, they need to. Um, be at school so how that is going to be ended I think it needs communities to stand because crime comes from community there's there's no crime that is just wandering in any school now but a child gets out of the school during school hours get a knife or whatever comes back to school if they are fighting with another children and they they stab children. A lot of those things are happening in many of our schools. So it's the societies where our children are coming from. Um, it's it's the people staying there that needs to say no. Look, it's enough now. We need to take charge of our schools. By the way, schools belongs to communities. When the school is open, it might be open by a, a minister, a premier, or an MEC, but you, you, that individual opens to, to leave that school to a community. So a community should, should protect a, and, and, and make a, a, a school its, its treasure. So a lot of schools used to have a security guard uh, checking the teachers and learners as they enter the school gates. And I've noticed now that most of those schools have no security guards uh, uh, guarding the schools. Is it a matter of uh, budget allocations? From what we hear from the department, it depends on the province. Remember, provinces have got their own allocations. So let's say, for instance, Gauteng, because... It's the department's prerogative to decide. We want um, securities. So they decide as a province, we want securities and uh, they they employ. Of course, that is uh, also motivated by SGPs. Uh, because SGPs, they are the ones who are more closer and they're the ones who are governing the schools, by the way. So it, it depends from one province to the other and the situation because not all schools in Gauteng, even as a province, have have, have have would would have security guards. So it's that school through their SGP interacting with the department, and based on the uh, history of what has been happening crime wise, um, then they are afforded a, a, a security guard. So it's a prerogative of a school, but also it's a prerogative of a, a province to decide. Um, whether they, they want, and it has got budget implications. So that's why I'm saying they decide, probably they will move one thing from the other and decide to take that um, and be able to employ security guards where they think are needed. And finally, wh what are the priority areas uh, for your parliamentary committee at the moment and for the rest of your term in office? We are busy with the, the basic education laws amendment now. 
it's a legislation that we need to pass that we need to pass before um this term ends you 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 are aware our term is ending next year in april or may i'm not sure but our priority now as a committee is to um do the basic education laws amendment we are doing now we are in the last leg we are doing public participation um we have done um in seven provinces we have been to limpopo um free state northwest kwazulu natal gauteng western cape um we will be this weekend in the northern cape province and then next weekend we will be in the eastern cape so that's our priority is to finish our our public participation process so that we can be able to pass this legislation before the term ends there was chairperson of the portfolio committee on basic education bongi wembingo kikaba speaking to policy about the basic education matters